Welcome back, everybody. I'm Sean LaFlock. I'm here with Scotty Hagnes. This is Conversations Fitness, Wellness, and Longevity. Scotty, how's it going? That's going pretty good. Going pretty good. Awesome. Um, so we've uh, had a, a week off. Uh, we're, we're, mm-hmm. re- we're back at it. Uh, this is, you know, uh, you know, we're a little over a year of doing this now. Uh, and uh, uh, I think right uh, I think we talked about last year's games, but we talked about this year's games. And I was actually up in Madison for the for the 2017 CrossFit Games. They had uh, the uh, individuals, teens, te- uh, teens, teams, and the Masters athletes all going at once Thursday through uh, f- through Sunday. Yeah, uh, it's been I, pretty I was, wild. Yeah, <laughs> was, all that much going on. Yeah, lots going on. I was coaching my uh, Masters athlete Myra Brandt um, throughout the weekend. Um, I mean, it was a full time gig for probably six days straight. So we flew in on Tuesday, uh, like late morning. There was about an hour difference from where I am. Uh, we, you know, uh, went right to the hotel, dropped stuff off. Um, I believe we, uh, from there just did, uh, you know, just got some grocery shopping done and all that kind of stuff. And then the following day we had a check-in, which was on Wednesday. So we had, uh, over 200 athletes checking in at 11 o'clock and it was a complete disaster. Um, this is their first time in Madison. I don't, in, I didn't think they anticipated everybody showing up at once, but I don't think it's as local as say, you know, Carson, where there's a bunch of athletes that can kind of live nearby. They come and go, whatever. We had legit 200 athletes who were standing in line at 11 o'clock to, to go through the entire, like, you know, um, uh, merchant village to get all their clothes and shoes and all the give- giveaways and that kind of stuff. Uh, so we were in line for an hour just to sign up to go through the village uh, approximately two hours later. So we signed up at 11, went th- then, then Myra and I went through it about 1.30-ish, and then we had an athlete briefing at 3, 3 or 4, uh, I think it was three, and then uh, we had to get a workout in, and then at four was the coaches' meeting, and then at five was the athlete briefing. Yeah. So by six o'clock, six thirty, we were out of there, but we uh, had to like the, the the masters were the only athletes that didn't get to try the obstacle course until the next day. So Thursday morning, they had to be there at six thirty. They didn't get out. They didn't get you know corralled until seven ten. Then they got pulled out to the the O course, and then by and then they had to line them up in groups of ten. So there's 120 athletes, men, and then 100 or excuse me, uh, everything from yeah yeah. So 120 athletes in groups of ten got four minutes each. So it took them about 40 minutes just to set it up, and then they started getting people through every four minutes, and it was torrentially downpouring about high fifties, people just standing out in the middle of the, the O course just getting drenched. And then when you got on the O course, it was so wet. So, I mean, logistically oh, that it, part of it was, was pretty much a disaster. And, but that being said, everybody had to go through it. Nobody was, was exempt. Everybody had to be there. You couldn't sneak away or anything like that. So Thursday morning, six thirty to, you know, about nine thirty, they were doing the O course. And then they had the, uh, run, swim, run at about like 11 o'clock. All the events went off without a hitch. Every single one of them was uh, right on time. Uh, but some of the uh, planning around it, it was just rough. It, it seemed like they were a bit understaffed this year as it was their first year in, in Madison. Because you know, usually you could take all the staff from the teens and masters prior to the event. And then they stick around and then you're, you're just doing the teams and uh, individual competition. But now you have four right. different competitions going at once, which means you have to have twice the manpower. Then they just didn't yeah. have that. So uh, in that regard, it was, uh, it was a bit rough. Um, all the warming up was done in one, one central area along with a lot of the uh, logistical stuff and checking in, all that kind of thing. Uh, it was away from the Coliseum and the age group pavilion. Uh, but you know, um, you know, it was, it was really well done there. You know, everything you needed, weights, uh, warm up area, rigs, uh, you know, uh, assault bikes, rowers, assault air runners. Um, and then they had an actual individual side for, for the individual. So for the 80 athletes who made it as an individual, they had their own area as well. That was kind of segregated from, uh, the teens teams and, uh, masters athletes. 
Um, but it, you know, the flow of it was very, very good in terms of the competition itself. It was just some of those little logistical things. Like after the first night we had to get first night of competing, we had to wait and then get our vests done for wow. the Saturday. And that took another hour. So people weren't leaving there till seven thirty. and they got there or they, about six, six thirty, seven o'clock. They got there at six thirty. Oh, gee, that's so long, just a long, long, long day. day. Yeah. And a, a lot of people were, were reminded of like military where it's just hurry up and wait. It's just like, oh, why are we here? Like, no, nope, that's just the way it is. You just got to stand around and wait. And then, oh, all right, we, here we go. We're, now we're going to start. No, nope, we're going to wait for another half hour, whatever it might be. So it's definitely a mental test. And I think uh, it was very easy for us to get into the negative. This is bullshit. Why are we doing this? I should say something. But realistically, there's nothing going on that's wrong. Everybody had to do this. Just – just, you know, keep a positive mindset. Everything is going to work out just the way it should. Like we all have to do the same thing. So, uh, in that sense, I think, you know, that, that just sticks out in my mind of one thing that happened to the weekend. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. You know, we got another, um, <clears throat> meeting with, uh, somebody that was uh, a judge there here, uh, in a couple hours. So it'll be cool to hear and see what kind of perspective I have with some of the staff. I mean, they were they were on point. the The judges were on point. <coughs> really, didn't see any um, 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 sketchiness with with the officiating or anything like that. It was yeah. legit. I mean, we didn't get a, a no rep the entire weekend. I mean, obviously, we 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 really work on those things, but nothing was out yeah. of the ordinary. They were really, you know, they were. The other yeah. thing was that the Masters events in themselves, the first event on the first day was a run swim run. Then it was the max snatch. So you know, no real. You know, it's very objective there. It's like, all right, this is yeah. your time and this is this and that's it. Um, the Saturday workout or the Friday morning workout was uh, an assault bike overhead walking lunge. So nothing crazy there. Just very objective things. Your knee touches the ground. You stand all the way up. You make it across the course. The assault bike is the assault bike. After that was the O course. Again, just get across the course. <laughs> And then yeah. that, and then that made it, made it easy to judge. <laughs> right? And then the evening was chest to bar, toe to bar, and clean and jerks. No problem judging there either. Like get your chest to the bar, get your toes to the bar, and then get the bar over your head. Uh, yeah. Saturday started off with a double under power snatch workout. Pretty straightforward there. Second workout that day was running, air squats, burpee box jump overs. No issues. The third event in that day was um, like a kind of a chipper slash ladderish kind of thing. It was a, uh, it started off with 10 muscle ups, a 50 foot handstand walk, and then a 25 foot, 150 pound sandbag carry. And then 10 muscle ups, 25 foot handstand walk, 25 foot sandbag carry, 10 muscle ups. Oh, sorry. Uh, it was 10 muscle ups, 30 wall balls, Handstand walk, sandbag carry. And they did that three times, and the, the muscle up stayed the same, the wall ball stayed the same. It's just the distances on the uh, sandbag and the handstand walk changed. So it just finished off with a 30, 30 foot handstand or a 50 foot, hands, uh, 50 foot sandbag carry. So again, a very objective kind of thing for the judging. And then, uh, so that was the last event of that day. And then on the last day, uh, Diane, and then into a six rope climbs, 30 thrusters. So in terms of the ability to judge all this stuff, Awesome. Really, really good. Well-selected workouts, tested di different varieties of fitness. Um, really didn't leave too many holes in there. The one thing that you might see kind of sometimes is pistols in these kind of competitions. Yeah. But, but I think they kind of left it out just based upon the fact that it's an age group. So even though 35-year-olds potentially could be regionals or even games competitors, uh, they kind of shy away from it just because they don't want the 45, 50-year-olds kind of having to do the same thing. Yeah, I guess I could see that. And with all the, there's been a you know, more lunging works. So they kind of covered that single leg domain with the overhead lunge. Oh, yeah. Anyway. Yep. Yep. I mean, uh, I mean, we uh, th this could be like a, a four part conversation in terms of like what this whole weekend was about. I mean, but but sure. uh, you know, obviously, we could, you know, I just kind of want to talk logistically about the whole thing and what Madison was like and that kind of thing. Yeah. Like maybe we can go more into a little bit into you know athletes and the, the workouts themselves, etc. So this might be one of a, a multi part series, I suppose. But um, you yeah. had been to Aromas, right? You competed actually in Aromas, uh huh. Um, and you've been to Carson, uh huh. Um, yep. I actually, when I went to Carson, I never, um, I wasn't there for the individuals and the teams. I was only there for the masters last year, masters and teens. Um, 
How was it as a, for a spectator at, at the individuals? Oops. You there? I guess. Yep. Uh, yeah. Um, the, uh, so the year that I was at um, Carson uh, was when they still did do the Masters uh, the simultaneous. Time. Yep. So 2012 was the year that I was down. Um, and if I, I'm almost thinking that there were teams and individuals would sometimes go at the same time. So this is when they would use the track for a number of events for both yep. individuals and teams. And then other things were done in the tennis stadium. They were not using the soccer stadium yet at that point. Yep. Uh, but then there was the, I believe they called it the North Lot. It's kind of there um, near where the pavilion would be. And uh, they have that, just a paved area. The parking lot kind of cordoned off. And that's where the Masters got to do their thing. Yep. And so it was a matter of trying to figure out. And I was there. You know, I, I had, you know, a number of friends that were in the very various classes of the Masters division. So I was attempting to catch that. But that was actually there with CrossFit for Vancouver, who were, you know, obviously competing and sometimes that trying to juggle being at certain places at certain times or um, really tricky. Uh, it was a great experience. I mean, I had a great time and it was uh, really cool, but uh, it was very difficult to logistically take it all in. Mm -hmm. You know, because even just getting, you know, like you, you're at the, uh, the tennis stadium, well, you give your seat up because you want to go watch your buddy, you know, over in the Masters area. Yep. And then you're going to think you're going to come back to watch the next event or heat or whatever, the tennis stadium, you know, good yeah, luck. Your seat's good. gone, buddy. <laughs> now, let me ask you this. Did they have separate tickets at that point for the, for the individual competitors and everybody else? Yeah, there was a, well, there was a gold, there was a ticket that you could buy that would get you access to the tennis stadium. And other yep. folks didn't have that. You could watch like on a, like a jumbotron. Yeah. 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 yeah which was in the uh, soccer stadium, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Um, I had one of the ones that gave me access to both sides, but, but not everyone had that. But even with that being said, I mean, it mm. was, you could basically end, end up with no seat pretty much. Yeah. We would, you know, we learned that you would go in there and you camp out um, pretty early ahead of time and, and just stay there. Um, the um, Madison, uh, obviously, it was in the col there's a coliseum that most of the stuff for the individuals is going on in. The run, swim, run, obviously, was outside. So um, it really wasn't hugely spectator friendly for that portion because you got to see like the beginning and in the end. And in, in some cases, that was, you know, obviously an exciting part, but you'd have to either be down by the lake to go swimming or to watch the swim. Um, but, you know, it was fairly accessible to all of the um, spectators, but it's just like you could kind of see it and that's it. Um, it wasn't where, like, you can watch them do the run somewhere and then see them do the swim and then have them come back to that position. It was, like, basically out and then come back. Um, but then all the other events, uh, well, they did the O course, which everybody was allowed to go watch. Um, the cyclocross stuff was in a field off somewhere, like about a mile away. So even the athletes were kind of bust there. So unless you really want to hump it up there, you had, you can go see the cyclocross. And even in that case, I thought I was under the impression that it was just a flat area. It's like undulating. So as soon as like you, they came across you, now they're going over a hill and they're gone. So you get All like right, a little so you taste. Yeah, you could post up and see kind of where people were very well. Yeah, exactly. You could just kind of see them go by and that was it. Um, the uh, obstacle course was probably, you know, the best, the most spectator friendly one because they had a huge an, an amount of stands set up over there. Uh, and then there was, uh, I think that was it. I think they had the run, swim, run, the cyclocross, and then the obstacle course that was kind of like anybody can go watch. And then all the other events were in the Coliseum. The Coliseum itself was pretty cool. I love the idea that, you know, you take the uh, the heat and the weather out of a lot of the equation for for a lot of the athletes, um, and it also leads to a pretty cool atmosphere within uh, the actual event. I mean, the snatch workout was insane. Uh, a few of the night workouts were insane in, in terms of uh, the spectators and the and the, uh, the electricity within the actual facility was was pretty right. spectacular. Um, you know, watching it on TV. Um, or watching it online, uh, it seemed pretty friendly for that. Uh, so there's no real, I mean, and I thought Carson was good as well. So that's not like they missed out on something. Uh, one thing I will say is that there's a bit of mystique about like working out in the sun in Carson, California and having kind of like that CrossFit feel there. It almost mm -hmm. felt regionals-esque 
watching the, oh, the right because we're go. used to regionals being indoors for the most part yeah so yeah, i guess i guess yeah. if this is your first time watching crossfit it's a little bit different but like um for people who are experienced in in, in viewing this stuff it, it's kind of like it's like indoors it's i mean they had they, they they took great care of utilizing the space well and the equipment was on point point and like the actual production was very good this was the first year that cbs sports took over because espn usually does it but they were okay. I mean, there, there was a lot of bugginess in terms of the website and the app that they'd been pushing over and over and over again. None of it worked. There was no cell signal within Madison just because there's so many people and just so much demand. So that was really rough about actually trying to get, um, you know, some kind of live stream up or calling somebody or FaceTiming or, or, oh, or man, Facebook yeah. living. Couldn't get any of that done. Um, so, I mean, uh, and then, then here's the other thing is that most of the stuff for the masters and the teens was done in the age, age group pavilion, which was basically from what I heard up until two days to the prior to the competition, they were storing agriculture and hay bales in. So literally like two days before the CrossFit games it was filled with like cows and hay bales and like crap. And they just had to clean it out, cut it out. And then they started putting up stands and rigs. Um, it, felt like early regionals esque, like something like I would have at my fairgrounds up here in terms of what oh, the yeah. age grouper was, were doing. There was no like, like if you were taking pictures of people as they were competing, there was no like signage behind it that said CrossFit games. It was kind of like they were throwing down in some kind of local competition in some ways. Oh, interesting. Yeah. That does remind me of some of the early regionals. Like we used to have the Northwest regionals used to happen in that. Uh, I don't know if it's the Washington state fairgrounds is great big yeah. rodeo pavilion and Yep. It was a dirt floor, you know, and if you were going to do snatches or something, they threw down a piece of plywood. That was you it. Stood up, you hoped it was all level enough. Your barbell didn't want to roll off it all the time, and there you were. Yeah, yeah. That that was the feel of it. It was it was uh, it was it was closed. It was you know not very not much airflow in there. Um, you know, and it was it was a little, you know dirty. But uh, again, like I'm not one to to, to complain. Yeah. But you're at the CrossFit Games. Yeah, the highest level of competing in the world. I know it's masters, but you know what? Like these people paid 250 bucks a pop to go to the CrossFit Games. They've competed for months to get there, uh, and they got one. They got one event in the Coliseum. They got their assault bike overhead walk and lunge. They got one yeah. event. Um, so that's what happens when you're doing things simultaneously. Uh, yeah, you know they got everybody got one event as a masters and a team, um, and that was it. I mean the Coliseum was cool. Um, uh, have a big jumbotron kind of thing up there. It would have been, it would have been really cool for, for them to have multiple events. But again, logistically it's, you know, it's not going to work just because the individuals have to go and they have, you know, they have uh, precedence over it, but, or, or, um, but you know, it's interesting to see what they're going to do next year. If they're going to do it all at the same time again, like this year, but they're going to have to step it up the game in terms of the personnel that they have. And, and, I know it's their first year. They're still working out the kinks of like where they need to be, when they need to be there, what, how long things are going to take. Um, but, you know, hopefully they're looking at themselves objectively and they're taking the constructive criticism and, and they'll reach out to competitors and vendors and all that kind of stuff just to get some feedback uh, so that they can make this thing an all-star, you know, a knockout. Right now, I, I would say it's about a B as compared to where, the way it was run in Carson, which, you know, was very good. Um, you know, it's, it's about a B right now. I, I, you know, if they want an A, they're going to have to make some improvements. Yeah. Well, that's cool. I mean, it sounds, uh, it's what I was able to see. It certainly looked like a, you know, pretty cool, uh, weekend event. I, between the live stream, just absolutely sucking. And then me having, uh, uh, you know, I had the number of commitments. I wouldn't have had a whole lot of time to be parked in front of my computer watching it anyway. I, I'm going to need to go back and watch, you know, the archived stuff now. Cause I haven't actually seen too many of the events. Yep. I yep. tried and on a number of them, but it just it was no dice. Yeah. Um, the other thing that uh, came to mind also is because I walked through the Vendor Village. I have a bunch of friends who, who own companies and they come out to the CrossFit Games because it's usually a huge revenue stream for them. Um, it was like dead. Hmm. Yeah. So th I think it's a combination of two things. One, the venue. Uh, just being new, um, you know, they're not in Southern California where people are just going there to, you know, just spend money on CrossFit games, apparel and all that kind of stuff. But B, I think everybody's shifting to a lot more online sales. So, um, you know, some of the companies weren't even out there. I mean, Progenics didn't have a booth and they're one of the biggest, you know, 
um, you know, biggest companies when it comes to CrossFit and supplements there are. Um, you know, uh, Rogue is obviously out there, Reebok out there. Um, you know, there was a couple other things like Romwad and uh, Compax had some stuff, but it was not nearly as extensive as what I saw in Carson. I mean, Carson was like a freaking fortress of, of people. And there was buzz and excitement and everybody was over there. It was all right. And again, I think it's partly due to the fact that it was, you know, in a, another fairgrounds type thing. It's like, oh, this seems like my, my throwdown in my local competition, whereas at the games – in Carson, it was outdoors. Everybody's kind of out. They want they're outside anywhere, whatever. Like if if do we really want to wait? Like walk around inside when it's like beautiful and like Wisconsin weather, or do you want to just hide away inside like a you know uh, uh, a fairgrounds lot or warehouse space for hours on end, looking at like CrossFit gear and stuff like that? So I don't know. It, it seemed a little ugh, to me, but again, maybe I'm being mm-hmm. nitpicky. Hmm. Yeah, interesting. I mean, I mean, like you said, it too had something to do with the change of the market too. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I will say Madison was beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Cool. Yeah, I've not it. been there. Yeah, the uh, that's cool. To, never, to been that, never been to that. Never been to that that central north area uh, before Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan. Never been there, but gorgeous area. You get off the plane, it's just rolling hills and cornfields and cattle and, you know, it was, it was beautiful. Just taking a drive. It was about a 20 minute drive from the airport to our hotel. Um, everything was very accessible, the highways and that kind of stuff. Really, really nice area. I, I think in that sense, it was a great pick for them. The price was right. Um, we got a hotel and then we just got food. So we got a hotel, we got a, we got a suite. So we could just cook everything there and, and, and store everything there. And I think we yeah. paid oh. it, for the entire week. I think we bought like 120 bucks of groceries and that was it. Wow. So we made out really, really well when it came to that. So I, I definitely would, would recommend if you're ever going to do those kind of longer competitions, you're better off just getting a suite, cooking and doing everything like that. Go to a Trader Joe's and spend a you know, hundred bucks, 200 bucks on groceries and just kill it like that. Uh, yeah, that was absolutely. that was a knockout. I mean, we were there for six days and we spent 120 bucks. It's not like yeah. we, were, we were meager in terms of what we were doing. We were trying to eat and perform and yeah, that yeah, kind to, of stuff. Yeah, eat to perform. Yeah, yeah. And that's uh, we've traveled that way for a long time. It's something we do, if, you know, not just for you know competition. Just that's how we travel with family. Is yep. You can always get a suite, go to the store. Yeah, we'll go out to eat maybe one. You know, yeah, a special place. But for the most part, I mean, you can save so much money and uh-huh. eat so much better. Yeah. If you just do it yourself. Yeah. And I think that's actually a great point for anybody who's watching this and you're not even thinking about, you know, going to a, you know, uh, a fitness competition is like, you know, if you're looking to stay on point in terms of your diet and shit, spending a couple extra bucks on a suite, go grocery shopping. Don't leave yeah. anything to chance. Like, and not to mention, you're going to be spending so much more money in the wrong run. If you're spending multiple days there, are you kidding me? Three yeah. meals a day eating out. That's like at least 15 to $20 a meal. Say you you know say you you're you're there for five days, um, and you're spending an extra ten dollars a meal, um, and you're just one person. So they say that's thirty extra bucks a day, uh, thirty maybe forty bucks a day. You're spending probably an extra two to three hundred dollars on eating out through those four or five day period. Take that money, buy the the suite for an extra fifty to hundred bucks a night or whatever it might be, and then that's it. And then you're also eating properly over that period of time. Yep. Yeah, totally. So, so highly you, recommend that. You, yeah. you, you've got that down. I've, I've, it's taken me 31 years to realize that. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, even places when it's not practical will attempt to. Most most uh, hotels will give you a fridge if there isn't one in the room. They yep. do have some portable ones they'll give you, or maybe I know it's not optimal, but a microwave. But if that's all yep. you can get, we actually just recently upped our game and got a combo pressure cooker slow cooker that is about. I'm, I'm making a gesture of about yeah, a yeah. foot square. Yep. And it come the packaging. It's got uh, you know styrofoam. Uh-huh. We actually take that in our luggage when we fly places, nice. on, and when we know we aren't going to have a full suite, and you can throw shit in it at more in the morning. Yep. Pop it in there, program it, go out, do whatever you're doing all yeah. day, come back, you got dinner done. Yeah, man, that's awesome. And so, the, the other thing I was thinking of is maybe even just getting a little portable hot plate and bringing a pan with you. Um, yeah. I mean, that, that could be, depending if you're driving or flying. Yeah, I imagine. believe we've done that at some point as well. Yeah, I was going to say. Not recently, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, again, like there's lots of ways to do this. Um, give me a second there, Scott. There's lots of ways to do it, but if you 
plan it out. I mean, you can not only spend, you can always just, you know save a, a good amount of money, but also you're eating uh, a lot more clean and uh, sticking to some things that you were you would want to be uh, had you uh, been home, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, just going over the logistics of the games. Uh, the other thing that uh, was 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 uh, about uh, Madison was uh, it's the fittest. Supposedly, I heard it's the fittest city in America. I didn't know that. Oh, wow. So I think I think it's Fitbit is kind of put that out. Whereas, oh. like they, you know, through their metrics, whatever they might be, have kind of analyzed all the different various data that comes in, and they kind of, hey, it's the fittest city on earth. Um, but uh, you know, it's pretty cool to see that. And there was a, there's a lot of cool like trails and 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 bike paths and all this kind of stuff. And the lake that was right there in Madison has it's 12 miles around and has a bike path all the way around it, paddle boarding, oh, nice. canoeing, yeah. kayaking, the whole deal. So. Uh, in that sense, I think, I mean, I would definitely go visit them that again, just if I wanted to get away and have somewhere that wasn't sweltering oh, in the, cool in the to, yeah. summer. I've been meaning to make a trip up to that general area, uh, up to Minneapolis and see my friend up there. Yep. And, then, uh, yeah, it'd be good to check yeah. out or maybe, maybe I'll make the games next year. Make yeah, it there. Just there you go. Check out, spectate. Uh, really quick, uh, before we run out of time, yep. I was just, I was curious, um, uh, what type of, recovery or regeneration strategies did you have guys have to employ over the course of the weekend if any so we um there they had the uh 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 rosty you know soft tissue therapy and k-taping guys there we did it like once and we we're just like ah, it's just not worth it um honestly it was eating um we did hot tub a couple times uh because there was a hot tub in a hotel just to kind of loosen up the legs and that kind of thing yeah. But uh, so maybe some heating packs just to kind of loosen up. Uh, I mean, I, I think our best stuff was done prior to the games. And I think that's yeah. the biggest thing. Go in with yeah. your body in optimal recovery position. Mm -hmm. Inflammation down. Massage therapy. We're doing Normatec boots every single day. So get ahead of it early. Get ahead. Yeah. That, that's my advice. Like there's, well nothing, yeah. there's nothing that you can do once you're already there. You should be eating right, sleeping right, massage chiropractic work, uh, normal tech boot work, all that stuff is what we did months leading up into it. And when we got there, she felt fine. Yeah. That's it. That's money. If you can do that, that is, that's where you want to be. Yeah. 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 And then, um, that's just awesome. making sure that, uh, you're in a comfortable environment and that you're, uh, be able to sleep well. Yeah. Yeah. And I think and awesome. that's, that's what we did. So part one of our uh, multi-part series, we have a lot more to talk about about the CrossFit Games, but I think that's all for today. I'm Sean yeah. LaFlock. You can get me at Sean at CrossFitDiaryBeach.com. I'm Scott Hagnes. You can get me at Scott at CrossFitPortland.com. Awesome, Scotty. I'll talk to you next week, bud. Awesome. Talk to you next week. Later.